So you've just graduated high school and you have no idea what you're going to do with your life. Keep listening to hear our thoughts and questions on this matter, or even just to reassure yourself that you're not the only one. My Quebec City Podcast. I'm Fred. I'm Sophia. And I'm Leanne. We are sex three students, and today we are going to talk about how the educational system does not prepare us for future career paths. So I really don't know about this topic, honestly. Yeah. And I really want to learn about it. I mean, you're going to be in pop in a little bit. Pop, we just finished it and it wasn't that helpful. Pop is when, like, they show us, like, how to pick our careers and all that. But it was informative in some way, but it also didn't really. Does it actually help? Well, we learned how to do, like, resumes and took this test and we got, like, a list of careers that might be good for us yeah. like in our interests yeah i thought was pretty helpful for a lot of people was he helped us uh how to prepare for job interviews and how to like act during a job interview exactly. and i think for some people that have never had a job or never did a job interview that was pretty helpful we also got to practice in class like with each other and yeah. give us notes and i think that was pretty helpful there's other things that the school doesn't really teach us about like Yes, it's about careers, but it's also, like, there's so much more in adult life that we don't know. Yeah. Stuff like taxes, like, how to pay them. It's, like, all these things that you're expected to know how to do, but no one ever teaches you. There's also, like, credit cards, debit. Um, well, debit, you might learn sooner than credit card, because credit card, you have to be 18. And <laughs> exactly. This is the things that we are not taught in high school. We're just kind of, like, thrown into a pit and expected yeah. Yeah. to know what we're doing. And it's also, I don't know if I, this is correct, but, like, sometimes there's consequences. Like, if you don't pay your taxes, there's you could go to jail, you could... Yeah. All of these things, but, like... Just or you're considered not good enough if you're not sure what you're doing with your life. And it, it kind of goes back to, I can see, Jip, when... You go into a course and you think that's what you want to do, but then you go out, you like, you finish your class and you're like, they don't show you what it's actually like. If I were to pick a career, I wouldn't pick on how much money I would make, right? Well, yes, it still matters, but Mm -hmm. that wouldn't be the thing I'm focusing on. The thing I'm focusing on is if I'm doing something with my life that I'm passionate about and that I like, rather than something I hate, something that I'm not passionate about, but I make more money. Exactly. You want to know that before... I want to know that before it's too late. Because some classes, there's a whole thing about, like, classes being more expensive because you get paid more. Like, does that make sense? Like, if I want to be a lawyer, I'm going to have to go to grad school and law school and all these things, but then I'm going to have a job that makes a good salary and then I'm going to be able to pay those student loans, everything. But if you get into that and then you change your mind, for a job that gives you less money, what are you going to do with all that money? So it's also like, it's not just what you're signing up for long term, it's also like the price. <laughs> I looked into um, more how colleges work and what I have to do to get in and how long it would take. And it really made me realize I might not be able to go to like the stage if I want with like most of my friends are going there I might not get to stay in touch with them Mm -hmm. and I understand that that's mostly like what a lot of people do but to me it's always been something that's been very important to me I want to keep my friends close I want to be a nurse but I realized that for that to happen I would have to get a bachelor's degree and I would have to go to a different SEJEP in French and for me that would be um difficult because I've spent my entire life in an English school but I would be up for that challenge it's just it's different than what I had in mind yeah exactly like it's really important the decisions you make and like I think even if you went to the same scholarship you'd have a different career option and that's kind of a given that you'd be separated from your friends yeah it definitely would mean that I had different options I could I don't know an option that I have um, is going to the same stage as possibly my friends mm-hmm. and taking, like, science. And- I think you should choose the best school for you and, like, not base it off your friends. No, exactly. Well, like I said, I understand that that's not, like, the most important thing. 
but I do feel like, to me, I've always needed someone that I know close to me. I've always needed yeah. someone. Mm -hmm. So, like, I want to be a lawyer, and that requires a lot of years, a lot of experience, and like really focusing. And I'm scared that once I actually get to do it, I'm gonna realize that it's too much for me. So if I could like get a preview or like be told what it actually entails. I would like that. I also feel like one of what I'm struggling with is I'm not sure I want to be a lawyer. So if I want to do something else, I feel like I'd have to take advanced science, advanced math. But it's like, what does what am I being taught in those lessons? We had to do a project about like our timeline, like what we could do in high school for a career. What we'd have to do after, like, CEGEP and then, like, grad school. And then, for me, it was, like, law school. But I had to do all that research, and I didn't really get any advice. I'm not expecting advice because we're in school and no one's a lawyer. But it's still, like, it's all very confusing to me. Yeah, I feel like sometimes you could want a career because you think it's something that could be very interesting. But at the same time, you're still kind of being pulled away by other things that interested in or that you're passionate about like for example I really want to be a nurse because it's something that interests me a lot and I want to make an impact I want to help it's something that I really like but at the same time I might want to go study arts and culture when I was doing like you said we had to do that timeline project when I was doing research on the universities and SAGEPs I saw there was either the option of part-time or full-time mm -hmm. and I thought oh good like part-time that could be good because mm -hmm. school can be pretty overwhelming that's great I could do that option that mm -hmm. would be really healthy for me but then I saw it takes 12 years to get through that yeah and it's and that's like not including SAGEP so yeah if I would want to do that I would have to do it full-time and I'm willing to make those sacrifices because it's something I'm really passionate about but I'm just also like you I'm afraid that I might just get too overwhelmed and I just realize that's not something I'm interested in and then I might have to like start my whole thought process and the whole education all over again yeah we don't know the amount of workload because like lawyer and being a nurse or like just being in the medical field in general that's a lot of like, knowledge and a lot of studies to do but we don't know how much um another thing I want to say is that for being in school for so long this is kind of like tied in with like a bit of feminism or like just in general life, but by the age of 30 or something, you're expected to be at a specific place in your life. Like if you're not married, if you don't have kids, if you're not yeah. in like well into your career, or you're, you're not successful. It kind of seems like you're failing, but you're not. Like, so Like the pressure of your future. and like, Exactly aging and time passing fastly like that's why i think they start early for students to with their career like in, like for example we're in sec three mm -hmm. and they already started with the the pop class mm -hmm. but you know and next year we're gonna need to choose our courses like um, high math or high science yeah and it's all like based on our careers yeah exactly yeah but I do realize, though, that, you know, my dad, for example, he graduated a university four years ago. Mm. Yeah. And before that... How, how old is he? He's 42. Okay. So, like, when he was 38. Yeah. And so, the thing is, directly after he left high school, he went to the army. Mm -hmm. And then he went to SEJEP and did some improv and arts and literature and all that. And then he went to SEJEP for science and because he wanted to become a nurse and by that time he was like 20 I think and then after that he had to go to university but he had to go part-time mm -hmm. because he had me and then he had my sister and then it was like all that and it just I think he managed it well but all of that at the same time seems a lot and it took a while he could still work while he was studying but yeah. he wasn't just it's hard, totally but, done with his studies, yeah. and I wouldn't want to go to work and being pulled down by all that extra work. Mm -hmm. That's for but sure. I feel like it might be a little different for us and some of the like listeners because Fred wants to be a nurse, I want to be a lawyer, Sophia wants to be an architect, which is all like very demanding jobs and like you need education mm -hmm. versus like I don't know. 
I'm not saying that, like, being a hairdresser is not as good of a job, yeah. but you need to, like, what we were taught in pop is that you need to, like, be guided by someone. Like, but yes, there are um, three different options um, to get a possible career mm -hmm. that we learned about in pop, and that is um, college, there's university, and then there's apprenticeship. Yeah, so it's the apprenticeship versus, like, being a yeah. lawyer, you need to... Have your bachelor's. Exactly. It just all depends on what field you want to go to. And there are no jobs that matter less than others. Mm -hmm. Like, they're all good. It's just different types of yeah. learning to, yeah. to do those jobs. I think we really need to talk to people with experience, especially. Because that's the one that helps the most. Because, you know, if you don't have the experience, you can't know for sure. Mm -hmm. Like, the reality... But, like, how do we get those types of people? Because, I mean... Well, so. there are a lot of different ways that you can get information about that. There's um, your parents. If they went through a similar process, there are teachers, other adults around you. And there are also some um, podcasts about people sharing their stories. Yeah, what I yeah. found, actually, in pop, we had to do, like... We had to do this project where we did, like, step-by-step... -step some people did it on careers, others didn't. I did it on becoming a lawyer. And you can, like, talk to people. You can watch videos. Sometimes there's videos. Yeah. But every everyone's experience is different. Yeah, for sure. Well, like, with their career and mm -hmm. what do you want to do with that? Especially for, like, if you're being a nurse, you might have, like, different types. Like, yeah, like, there's always more to what you want to do. Yeah, there's like, more specifics. Yeah, like, like let's say I want to become architect. Well, there's, like, uh, the technical architect mm -hmm. that does, like, the dirtiest job. And then there's, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, really finishing the design. And then you have the real architect that designs the base of the house. Mm -hmm. And plenty more, uh, probably. Yeah, or if you want to be an author, there needs to be someone to write it and mm -hmm. edit it. Or if you want to be a lawyer, there's, like criminal tax business like there's so many options yeah. so how do we pick a career but then how do we pick the specific field in that career yeah because maybe you're gonna end up in some place that you never imagined yeah was gonna be that's your job for the rest of your life mm -hmm. but then that's what, not what like, you want to do for my mom she wanted to do something really i don't know what specifically but she wanted to do something related to photography and she had to take class that was also linked to design interior and then it just completely switched she went to design interior i'm gonna have to get back on what sophia said earlier about the different types of things in your career and how you're stuck with it for your whole life no you're wrong there is the option of going into one field and then getting the opportunity of going into another and maybe that's either one course to take or an apprenticeship to learn how to do that. And then maybe you stay in there for like a year and then you realize you want to go into something else. If you have the bases, I think it's pretty simple to go mm -hmm. through it and like go through a different course to learn how to do different things around your field. For the last few minutes of this podcast, we asked our school's music teacher about his experience in Sejeb and what advice he would give people in a similar situation. I'm David Rockray, a teacher at Quebec High School, amongst uh, other things, since I'm also a professional musician and I, I pursue a professional music career. Uh, so our first question is, when you graduated high school, what was your initial plan or expectations for, let's say, Sejef and what you wanted to do with your future? Yeah, I had no idea what I was going to do <laughs> when I finished high school. Yeah, I knew what I didn't like. I, I knew what I liked a little. I didn't quite know where I was headed. So I just followed the flow and did what my other friends did. And I went to Sejef uh, saint foy and I chose uh, human science, continue my studies, because I knew I, I didn't like applied sciences. So I was kind of interested in psychology back then. Okay. So you followed your friends, basically? Basically, yeah. Because I didn't know really what I was going to do in my okay. life. Um, 
So next question, what made you realize you wanted to switch class? You know, as you, as you grow up and as you become more mature with time, it really becomes more defined what you, uh, what you really uh, love inside. And uh, I remember sitting in a psychology class and at some point the teacher was speaking and I just toned out. I just stopped listening for some moment and I had this realization that I wanted to sing. And I already did sing. And I had, you know, followed singing lessons, but I decided at that point that I wanted to be a professional singer. So I walked out of that class and went to see the program's director and said, what does it take for me to be in music? And he showed me the way and I auditioned and changed my program. Was there anything about the class that made you want to switch or was it just that you preferred music? No, it's just a realization. You know, at some point you're sitting there, you're listening, and it is, it is, it's interesting, and so on, but it's like in the cartoons, you know, when the spotlight comes on you, everything else disappears, and then you're there with yourself, and you, you're standing on the table thinking, I want to be a singer, and, you know, and then you realize you're in the class again, and people are staring at you. Yeah. That's a bit like how I felt without getting up on my table, you know, but I had that impression that the revelation for me, you know, like a moment of this is what I want to do. Yeah, it happened, you know, a little later on. I had done already three sessions of Cégep. I, I could have continued and finished my human science, but I didn't. I just decided to switch programs. Yes. Yeah, so I followed my heart. Um, what do you think high school should teach their students? So, like, the reality of Cégep, how to choose a career, like, stuff like that. Uh -huh. I, but let's say you were, your decisions were really in the moment, but... Let's see if the students really want to plan their future ahead. And what will you suggest? Well, you know, school right now is very much oriented towards finding a job later. Mm -hmm. And to, to force a reflection on, on youngsters like your age on what do you want to be later on and do today what you need to do later on. Where I'm still that old school teacher who thinks that school is not there so much to prepare workforce. School should be there to help you understand who you are and to feel what you like, what you don't like so much, what you're good at, what you're not so good at, what are your work habits, how do you approach difficult tasks. And all of these make you a the person that you, that you are. You know, in a high school, we teach as teachers, we teach mechanics and we teach surgeons in the same classroom. So what we're teaching is not so important. It's how students learn that's important. And that's how, that's what will decide later on where they're going to be. So I'd say don't stress out with future. Future is going to happen, you know? Just, yeah. just be happy with finding out who you are as a person and becoming the best person you could be. Did you find the whole process stressful or draining? If so, what kept you motivated? It's constantly stressful because you're, you're never sure you're making the right decision. Yeah. And you know, like my parents were not necessarily really happy with me choosing music as a career path, you know, because it's not an easy career path. And neither of them were musicians. So they kind of thought, well, we can't help you. Yeah. And I kind of had it like, it's okay, I've got this, you know. But at the same time, you're kind of like going through deceptions because uh, and doors don't open by themselves. I've been told no more often than I've been told yes, you know, so there is a stress factor that's important. But, you know, trusting and, and being, you know, uh, just positive, having a positive attitude, keeping an open mind, uh, accepting that you're not necessarily going in the direction that you think you're going. Sometimes you might divert in one, you know, one way or the other. You make friends that help you progress. You meet teachers that help you progress. And all of those allies, that you're making along the way, they'll be with you for your life. So you, there's stress, but there's also trust. And the trust aspect is important. Trust in yourself and trust in people who are there to help you. Uh, last question. What advice would you give for students and their career path? Well, you see, that's basically now the yeah. sum up of what we've talked mm -hmm. about earlier. It's, uh, it's find out who you are, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. and make sure that you keep accessing those allies. The adults around you that can help you, guide you, friends that are also helpful, uh, you know, the teachers that give you that little push of interest in something, you know, those help you develop who you are.
and become as best as you can. So that's my advice for you. Just keep, keep being the wonderful people you are and let yourself become. Before you choose what, you know, find out who. And once you know who you are, then you know what you want to do. And it'll probably be easier to choose in the moment what you want to do when you, you found out who you really are and like what yeah. you're passionate about. Absolutely. And you know, there are jobs out there that exist that you probably have never heard about. How could yeah. you choose them, right? Yeah. Mm. So yeah. at some point, there, there are going to be like op options and opportunities. And you might think, well, I never thought of that for myself. But yeah, I can see myself there now. Yeah. And that's what I meant when I was saying, keep the doors open. Keep your mind open. And you know, take opportunities as they present themselves. And just strive for happiness. Yeah. You know, when you get old, Happiness is what counts the most, not the money, not the fame, not the happiness in your life. Mm -hmm. you no, know? so that's your that's your long long term goal. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank uh, you for your time. Yeah, thank you. It's a pleasure talking with you. <laughs> I'm wishing you all the best for your choices and for your future. That's all, folks. Thank you for taking the time to listen to our thoughts and concerns about this matter. Stay safe out there and have a great day.